Hi, my name is Jonathan Silva, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and I'm here to bring you our latest edition of the Power BI monthly update. In this month's update, the September 2021 edition, we're gonna go ahead and look at some of the new features that were brought to us by the Power BI team and how we can use those features in our current and our future reports. And before we get started, let's go ahead and remember to like, comment, or share below in order to get more of our content in order so you can have a lot of these future updates coming at you. So let's go ahead and take a jump right into those updates in our very own Power BI report. And so what you see on the screen is just our landing page in a, in a basic Power BI report. And if we go away from this homepage, we can see our very first update in the new formatting options for buttons. Now, last month, we talked about the formatting options for shapes. And one of the things you'll notice is we now have the exact same capabilities for buttons as we did for shapes. So if we go ahead and insert a new button, we can go ahead and see what those look like. I'm gonna insert at the top and add in a button. And what you'll notice is the default uh, shape is still a rectangle. We can add in a blank button there. We can go ahead and drag it and reshape it. We still have that default rectangle. However, if we come on over to our formatting options here, we can open up our shape and we can go ahead and change that shape to anything we have available with all the other shapes. So we can go all the way from an arrow into the chevron arrows, an oval, down to the uh, speech bubble, trapezoid, and so on. So let's go ahead and choose a random one. Maybe let's choose a heart. And with our button, if we wanna resize, just as we've always done, we can easily do that. What are some of the other options we can do with buttons are, we can go ahead and we can change the shape shadow i'm just going to drag this a little bit larger for us we can go ahead and add a shadow onto that shape so if we wanted to make our default here we can make it a little bit less transparent so we have that shadow added onto it we can add in a higher pixelated blur there as well we can go ahead and add in a glow to our shape so if i wanted to have say a red glow on the outside of my heart here i can go ahead and change the color scheming here to a bit of a red Let's do a little bit less transparency, actually. We can increase the blur if we want, and now we have our glow. We can also change the rotation of our shape. So if we want to, we can go ahead and type in, maybe we want this part to be on a 40 to five degree angle. So we can go ahead and do that. We can do the entire shape, including the text here at the top. We can do just the shape here and just the text at the, lo the last location. So we can have all the different capabilities that we can see within our shapes, but now the same formatting options are available within our buttons. Now, one of the other really nice new features that we have for our buttons is we can go ahead and add in a custom image or icon for that button. So let's go ahead and add in a new button. And when we go ahead and format this button, what we're gonna select is the icon dropdown. Now in the icon dropdown, you'll notice we, we just have our default state, right? And if we wanna change the icon itself, instead of choosing blank, we can choose custom. And by selecting custom, and by selecting add image, we can choose which type of icon we wanna add. So if I select add image, I'm gonna go into my downloads. I just downloaded an image off the web, and we're gonna use this share feedback icon here. We're gonna open it up. And now we can use this custom image as our button. And if we want to, we can change the fit of this button, this image for this button, either fit the screen or completely fill the shape that we're gonna create. We can have a vertical alignment, either the top end, the middle or bottom. We can horizontally align this as well, left, center or right. And we can also change the margin. So if you wanna increase the margin for each side, for our button, we can do that as well. Furthermore, you can just go ahead and add in your own size if you have a number in mind. So we think about how we can have these buttons work. Again, every time we wanna do a button, we just need to make sure we go ahead and turn on the action and select what type of action we want our button to have, right? And then we can go ahead and have that capability even further. And so another new feature that we now have in our September 2021 edition of our Power BI update is on the waterfall chart. And so one of the things that we see quite often with our waterfall charts is we 
a lot of our clients don't necessarily like that we have this total column here all the way on the side. Sometimes this can be quite confusing. It could be um, you know, something we just simply don't need to have within our visual for our report. Well, now in the most recent update, we can go ahead and get rid of that. We can just turn off that total column at the end. So if we go over to our formatting options, we can come down to the Y axis and we can choose all the way at the bottom here to toggle off the show total. Now, when we toggle off the show total, it doesn't affect the subtotal columns in the breakdown in any way. It simply just turns off that last column so we don't have to have that within our visual. Just the same as if we were to turn off the X or the Y axis, wouldn't have any impact on the actual data that we're seeing within it. And so the last new update that we have within our visuals within Power BI is on the line chart. And now with the line chart, we can create and format series labels within this new update. And so using the series labels option, if we come into our formatting here, we can come on down here. If we turn that on, you will notice we now have a label that is attached to each of our series that is going to be used subsequently with our other legend at the top. Okay, and so now this extra label can supplement that legend if we want, or we can simply use it instead of our legend. So if we want to just simply turn off the legend and have some more space, we can now have these labels attached at the very end or the beginning on the left side there of our shape. Alongside some of the new visualization updates that we see in this month's uh, push out, we now have some additional features and it's just the general accessibility options within Power BI. And so there's a new 64-bit version of the Power BI Report Builder that we can access from the Microsoft Download Center as well as the Microsoft Store. And with this new 64-bit version, we get greater support for daytime parameters as well as a number of accessibility fixes related to keyboard shortcuts and screen reading tools. Furthermore, we now have a new feature at the Power BI service that provides us greater insights into trends, anomalies, and KPI analyses that we've ever had before. And so when you go ahead and open up a report on the Power BI service, you'll see that Power BI will automatically run an insight into your data, and it will push out any top notifications of anomalies or any other noteworthy items based upon factors like recency and significance. We could also go ahead and select Get Insights, which manually pushes out those insight analysis that gives us a little bit further information about the, the KPIs, the trends, again, and the insights that we might have, and it possibly could also include some explanations into that data. Lastly, there are a few new updates to the Power BI mobile application that we can use within this last rollout. So there's a, there's a new goals hub that has been added to the app that allows us to view our scorecards and closely monitor any, any of the goals that we might have either assigned to us or ones that we personally created. And we can view and update those goals by selecting the quick check-in or the new check-in option. And we can also go ahead and request access to any report that is now shared with us all inside of the application. So if anybody has sent you a link to a new report but hasn't provided you full access yet, instead of going all the way to the web-based application, we can now just do everything from our mobile app making everything just a little bit easier for us to have access to. Well, I've hoped you've enjoyed this month's monthly digest and our Power BI update for the month of September 2021, and I really hope to see you back here for our next one. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe below to keep getting those updates and all of the other content that we at Pragmatic Reports are putting out available to you. 